Hello everybody and welcome to the Phoenix International Raceway for race two of the EPRL Bass Pro Shops Cup Series Season 8. We are here at the uh, Phoenix International Raceway for the Subway Fresh Fit 400 and uh, on the pole is the 42 of Charles Jackson. Alongside him is the 13 of Mitch Speed after, uh, after a pretty good run in the Daytona 500 finishing in the ninth position. Starting third is Eddie Jones. Uh, that car in the 13 just in front of him, Mitch Speed. That was his old ride. And now he's in the 11 FedEx office car, as most of us know. And uh, he starts in the third spot inside row two. Outside row two, starting in the fourth spot is the rookie, Hayden Klein. And rounding out your top five in the number three is John Dillon, who uh, was able to lead two laps at Daytona. Uh, had a pretty solid day until he... Uh, uh, started getting, well, he got some damage, I believe, in a crash and just wasn't able to rebound. He ended up finishing 26th in the 500, so let's see how he can rebound here. And uh, let's send you down to get the command uh, to fire the engines. Driver, start your engines! Subway Fresh Fit 500. I know we said 400 earlier. That was a mistake on my part, but here we go. Coming out of turn four. Pace car is in. Charles Jackson and Mitch Speed lead them down. Green flag in the air. And we're underway. Charles got a great start. And already Speed shuffled to the high side in contact between the leaders. Hard into the outside wall is Charles Jackson, the pole sitter. And now more contact being made and a big problem behind them. Jake Smith in the six was the first one around, but there was a lot of contact being made in turn two. And now in turn four, nearly contact between Eddie Jones and Hayden Klein. Klein is gonna come around and lead him back to this uh, yellow flag. That was incredible. Mitch Speed, the outside pole sitter. Brandon Vain with damage. Tyler Chance, Brad Smith, Ethan Roberts. Oh my goodness, there's, there's a... Uh, Jake Smith and Andrew Schwartz, they were in it. But we gotta get your replay of what just happened because that was a very chaotic first lap of this event. And out front, it is the 55 of Hayden Klein. All right, well, let's get a replay here for you. Already, I mean, the pace car, I think, just drove through the pits. I don't think he even stopped in his pit box because there was a wreck so early. But heading into turn one, Charles kind of body slammed that corner he just drove it in really deep trying to get clear of speed before they got out of two and uh, kind of backfired as they both slam into the outside while Charles ended up being okay he rallied and crossed the line in fifth but then when speed came back across there had been contact and then uh, the 88 of Sean Henley got into Julie Stewart causing uh, Jake Smith Carter Kozlowski gets into Robert Piette Courtney Simpson, Carter's sister, and wow, the 17 of Ryan Acosta just misses it. Garrett Jones with some damage. Seth Cole gets into it as well. Ooh. Oh, Kurt Kozlowski barely able to check up in time. <laughs> that was actually a pretty uh, pretty cool record point there by Kurt Kozlowski. Just barely checked up and squeezed right on through everybody. Well, the disaster this could have been. For the Stakeham Chevrolet, Kurt Kozlowski, watch this as the big wreck uh, breaks out in front of him. And Ethan Roberts just in front in the 40. Ooh, some slight damage, but I mean, that could have been a lot worse. If you would have drove right on through that, that could have been, uh, been disastrous for Kurt. Enters this race, I believe, 22nd in points. Yeah, 22nd in points. Obviously, it's only race two, but you, you do want a good start. Um, you know, wh if wherever you are after race five, you're going to stay right around that area. So obviously, uh, race two, um, obviously we're inching closer and closer to race five. And that's kind of around where it starts to even out. At least that's what the past few seasons have showed us. So Hayden Klein is out front. So let's uh, re 
reset this for you and get you back to the restart. Alright, well, we are back here at Phoenix. Hayden Klein is out front. Second is Eddie Jones. Third, John Dillon. Fourth is Richard Johnson. And fifth is Charles Jackson. Remember, he got pinned into that outside wall. That was kind of what caused the first caution. Uh, Joshua Balkin, the Daytona 500 winner. He runs in the sixth spot. Seventh is Sean Henley. Eighth, Matthew McMurray. Ninth, Connor Breeden. And tenth is Julie Stewart, the Budweiser shootout winner. Ended up finishing 39th for the Daytona 500. This is a run she needs. So, uh, head back up to the front here. Remember, Michael Waltrip Racing had Luke Martin win the Daytona 500, then Pichu London won uh, here at Phoenix. Pichu isn't around in this series, and uh, Luke Martin is driving for a different team. But Michael Waltrip Racing could go back to back at Phoenix. Um, that'd be interesting if they could. And remember, the 15 car of uh, John Dillon went back to back in season for this racetrack. That's a hard track. Michael Waltrip used to drive. The green flag is back out. Racing once again here at Phoenix. As long as nobody body slams the first turn, I believe we're, we're going to be A-OK. -okay. And oh boy, contact on the leaders, but it was able to be a uh, pretty slight contact. Uh, keep it together. Now the battle is on for second. John Dillon is trying to make some noise, trying to get around Eddie Jones. It's going to be tough, though. I think Eddie's got one of the better cars in the field. And as they come across the line, we are still green. We, uh, we are probably going to see some pit stops happen today, so that's just a heads up for you right there. That was the seventh lap of the season that Hayden Klein has led. He, won with, he led one lap at Daytona. Trying to tally up these laps to lead here for Hayden early. It would just be a lot easier if he could lead wire to wire. I know how many laps he'd be. <laughs> uh, oh, Jake Smith on pit lane along with Richard Johnson. Richard restarted fifth. That's a big problem. Garrett Jones deep in the field. Robert, yeah, they got uh, damage in that first wreck, so it's no wonder that they are in that field. Sean Gallagher, remember, he brought up the first caution at Daytona after some early contact. And he's actually slowing down. Sean Galligan bringing it to the pit lane along with the 16. Are we seeing an early, uh, early scheduled pit stops for these guys? These guys do have damage though, so that's what I'm still wondering about. Maybe uh, they went back out onto the track and they realized that their cars still aren't fully repaired and they're just trying to top it off on fuel right now so they can make it to the end. So maybe some strategy uh, being played. Klein needs no strategy right now because he's, he's been driving away in that 55. John Dillon has uh, kind of fallen off the back bumper of Eddie Jones there. But now look who's into fourth, Joshua Balkin. Joshua has been able to fight his way back up into the top five. Remember, he restarted sixth. He's up to fourth. But Richard Johnson, I can't believe that. I, believe, I, I thought he restarted in the fifth position. If I'm wrong, but I think, I think Richard restarted in the fifth spot. And, uh, he's having some problems here. There's uh, a driver in the Ford EcoBoost Ford Fusion. You're going to see quite a few uh, drivers sponsoring Ford EcoBoost this season. All the Rush Fenway cars are going to do that. Ryan Acosta sporting those colors this week in the 17. He's had a uh, pretty. Uh, Pretty solid career overall here in the Bass Pro Shops Cup Series. Has a few wins to his name. Dylan Young, the runner-up in the championship last season. Julie Stewart has come so close to winning the championship the last two seasons, just has not been able to pull it off as she's trying to uh, go after it once more. And now we are running up on Jordan Balkin, a lap driver. Hayden Klein is going to have to ease his way around the 16, and if he doesn't ease a, his way around, Eddie Jones is there to pounce. Eddie's just there to pounce anyways. It doesn't even, it's not even going to take a mistake by Hayden. I think Eddie is a little bit better than Hayden right now, but Hayden does have the track position, and as we know at Phoenix, the track position is pretty, pretty important. Let's see. Last time around, it was the advantage to Hayden Klein. Yeah, Hayden Klein. Okay. 
John Dillon is catching up, but uh, another driver that's catching up trying to sweep these first two races is Joshua Falcon. Remember Jordan, just in front, maybe he could slow down these leaders and allow Joshua to get there. Be kind of a cheap move, but uh, he does that. Um, I guess he, I guess he does that and allows his brother to close in. Nobody's ever won the first two races of the season. I believe last season, actually, Luke Martin came pretty close. I think he had a pretty solid run in this, uh, in this race. So as we come around to complete lap, lap 16 of 48, and now, here, now here comes Hayden to the bottom. We are one-third of the way through this event. Hayden Klein has led every lap so far. But I'll tell you what, I think Eddie Jones is going to get, uh, well, he's already there, so it's not like we have to say he's going to get there, but I think he's going to get the lead before too long, because he can't hold uh, the better car off for very long. Even though Hayden uh, is a little bit quicker, I just, it seems like he's just not quite being able to uh, keep that margin the same. I'm not really sure how that works. <laughs> If you would assume if you have a faster car, you'd be pulling away, but that's not the case. But Eddie Jones was quicker that last time around, and actually now is falling off the back bumper of Hayden Klein. So this is kind of strange, but uh, let's check in. Anybody else taking pit stop? Doesn't look like it right now. Kyle Smith, there he is. Right now 33rd after the first race of the season. He's had a really rough career. Never won a race. And doesn't look like he's going to get it done here today. Rochester. And that's a typo on my part. I'm sorry, that is actually Jeffrey Fingy in the 78 car. I accidentally put Matthew McMurray using that 78 car. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, there was, in fact, there Carter Kozlowski in the Nike colors. He's going to have Nike and Zess as his primary pace news, but he may have a few others jumping on board. Jacob Grant, after a tough Daytona 500, is trying to rebound in the Farmers Insurance Chevrolet. He's actually trying to make a pass on Courtney Simpson. The GoDaddy.com Chevy doesn't look like that's going to happen. Courtney does have a pretty strong car, just doesn't have a track position. Let's check in on this battle for the lead. It is still Hayden Klein out front, but in the meantime, Jordan Bollocken has actually been able to drive away. Not something we usually see. Usually when you're catching a lapped car, probably going to get held up, but actually Jordan looks like he may have a better car than the leader, and he does. Well, that's, uh, that's odd. Look at that. 27.089, uh, 27.288, wow. <laughs> Jordan's about two tenths quicker. And that's going to be tough. You can't run down a leader in, you know, 28 laps. You can't run down a leader only catching him in about 100 laps. Well, the way he's catching him, actually, he is catching him more than one. Yeah, let's see. I mean, yeah, it's only about 100 the lap, really. Um, and that's, that's going to be really tough to catch him. But remember, we are going to see some pit stops, and that could be the deciding factor um, here in this event. But actually, they're pretty low on the track. They're taking pit stops right now. Pit stops are happening as we speak, and Joshua Balkin is staying out on the track. He's going to stay out and get an extra bonus point and lead a lap. So, uh, so some strategic uh, staying out uh, during the pit stops is going to allow Joshua Balkin to score an extra bonus point. Meanwhile, cars are... Pit lane is just flooded over right now. I mean, everybody wants to take pit stops and just get it over with. Get those fresh tires before everybody else. And now Joshua Balkin peels off onto pit lane. Oh, look out. William Duncan peels out. And, and he's got to slow down and make sure he's clear of William Duncan so he can get to his pit box. Cars are pulling out all over the place. Lucky for him, he's not been able to. He has not run into anybody. Okay. So, the pit stop cycle has is far from you completely cycle through, but it looks like it's going to be Hayden Klein, John Dillon, and it's still so unofficial, we don't know. It, oh my goodness, look how far back the 11 is. Eddie Jones, remember he was second when this pit stop cycle started. Now who led that lap? 
Joshua Balkin. Joshua pulls off of pit lane. And he merges onto the racetrack. Let's see, is anybody in? Oh, is Hayden Klein still out front? Joshua Balkin and John Dillon are going to be fighting for that position. And Andrew Schwartz, I thought he was a lap down, but he's not. Schwartz is right there looking for his first win in a very, very long time. It's been since season three, uh, the last time Schwartz won an event here in the Bass Pro Shops Cup Series. Look out, he cuts off Joshua Balkin and nearly wrecks. But Hayden Klein has been very strong throughout this event. Okay. Now this is where fuel strategy is going to be big. Okay, we everybody started pitting around lap 23 or 24. That is pretty much right on the nose at the the uh, halfway point. And if they were running out of gas right around lap 24, they're going to be running out of gas right around lap 48. But we did have a caution early in the going, so they were able to save some fuel there. Um, I don't think they were specifically saving fuel, but I'm sure they were probably uh, saving fuel by not even having to, because remember, two caution laps equals about one regular lap. So, at about th uh, four caution laps, that makes up for about two laps. So yeah, I think these guys will be okay. Um, yeah, I think I think these guys are going to be just fine, but if they did pay take a pit stop a little bit earlier to get those fresh tires, they're going to be paying for it in the long run, because... Uh, well, the tires are going to fall off just a few laps before, and their fuel mileage, that, that could be a little bit uh, dicey. So it is Hayden Klein leading John Dillon, who has taken second from somebody. Who, who was second? No, no, that person was second. Oh, oh, no, we have a different leader completely. Oh, and it was Richard Johnson for all that time. And now Richard is on the pit lane. He peels off. He's not going to beat uh, Hayden because Hayden is already ahead of him. But remember, like we said earlier in the race, Hayden Klein, or no, sorry, Richard Johnson had taken a pit stop. So now as he merges, oh, he's a lap down. So this is confusing. Is, why, did, why was he scored first if he was a lap down? That's the confusing part for me. And as I come across the line, it is Hayden Klein still out front. Maybe he, uh, oh, he probably got his feet. His, uh, he probably got back on the lead lap during the, those pit stops and he stayed out and then once he was in the pits, he lost that lap. So now I understand it. So uh, Richard Johnson is actually going to be scored as leading a lap. Um, so as we come through the turns three and four, Hayden Klein's going to come around. If this was the old race, it would be two laps of racing to go, but this isn't the old race. We still got 18 laps of racing remaining. Uh, it's been a tame race so far. Really, only one big crash, and that was on lap one. But since then, we have been clean and green with Hayden Klein leading the field. Second is still John Dillon. Uh, John, let's see. Yeah, he's he's a little bit slower right now than Hayden Klein, but Hayden is running up on a few lap drivers, Jake Smith and Garrett Jones. So let's see how that goes over for him. Hayden exiting turn number two right now. Let's see, John Dillon. John was a little bit quicker that last time around, but Jordan Vulcan, a lap driver, is pulling back up onto the racetrack. And he's got to get out of the way before John Dillon catches him, because that could be a big problem. I remember earlier in the race when we saw Jordan Vulcan, he was actually quicker than Hayden Klein, but now we got side-by-side -side lap cars right in front of the leader. Uh-oh, don't wreck. Don't wreck, boys. Look out. Okay, Jake Smith, he's a rookie. Garrett Jones has been in every single Bass Pro Shops Cup Series race. Being the veteran that he is, he is letting Jake Smith by. But he's holding up Hayden Klein just a bit. Never mind, he's getting out of the way. And Garrett is actually able to pull Hayden Klein as they come off of the corner. Let's see. John Dillon, oh, he was a lot quicker that last time. He was in the 70s, high 70s, I should say, but he was in the, or Hayden Klein was in the 27s. So, uh, yeah, about two tenths quicker was John Dillon that last time around. 79, yeah. A little bit over two tenths. And he's, he is really falling off. He's stuck behind Garrett Jones right now, and that is holding up Hayden Klein in a big way. 
Let's see that last time around. Once again, it was an advantage by about two and a half tenths for John Dillon. Garrett Jones is not giving in. Hayden Klein is really wishing this was the old race where we only had 32 laps, but this is the new event. We got 48 laps here at Phoenix as he crosses the stripe. Still 13 laps to go. Garrett Jones holding up Hayden Klein and John Dillon is a coming. Here he comes. Wait. Actually, Hayden was a little bit quicker that last time around. I think he's getting to fighting with Garrett so much that he's focused on passing. He's actually speeding up a bit. But Garrett still is able to pull him on exit and pull him by about three to four car lengths, even five car lengths off into turn one. Hayden Klein is going to body slam one of these turns one of the, these times, I think, if he gets close enough. But remember, we saw that on lap one with Charles Jackson, and, well, we all know how that turned out for Charles. Let's see where he's running. He's running 39th now. I have a feeling they took some... Uh, on that, on that pit stop, they probably repaired some of that damage, and they, they're probably regretting it right now. And let's see, John Dillon was in the 26th, and oh my goodness, Garrett Jones. Oh wait, no, I'm looking at Garrett Jones this time. Hayden Klein. Hayden's still pretty far off. John's still catching him by about a hundred, or about a tenth. Remember, John Dillon last season fell off to the second spot in the all-time wins list. He's trying to get back up there with Garrett Jones and tie himself on there. And yeah, we, we were talking about it. Hayden's gonna uh, body slam one of these turns and it's just not gonna pay off. He's still battling with these three other lap vehicles and uh, this could be a problem if he keeps battling them, with, uh, them like this. As you can see, he slides up on exit and is losing out to these lap drivers. Okay, Richard Johnson. Okay, there's John Dillon. Yeah, John is there. John Dillon is catching him in a hurry. He was he he had the nose in front of Robert Piet and Garrett Jones, but they pulled him on exit. Nine laps to go, and John Dillon is there. John Dillon trying to score his seventh career Bass Pro Shops Cup Series victory, but Hayden Klein is now clear of Robert Piet. Is Piet going to be able to fight back? No, he's not. Now John Dillon may be stuck behind these lap drivers. Garrett Jones trying to pin him down. Garrett Jones has a lot of respect for John Dillon as those who are the two winningest drivers. Garrett Jones has a lot of respect for John Dillon and basically if he can't win a race, he would really like to see him. And oh no, big trouble, huge wreck as they come out of turn number two. Getting T-bone as Jordan Balkan now back into traffic. A huge stack up on the back straightaway, cars still piling in. Dylan Young is wrecked. Matthew McMurray, Carter Kozlowski piles into it as well. A huge, huge stack up. They're racing back to the line. Drivers pulling off into the pits trying to avoid some carnage. But it's Hayden Klein winning the race back. But they're, I think they're finally done wrecking. They might, I think they're, I think they're finally done. But they were wrecking basically from turn two all the way to turn three. And now, this changes everything. One caution on lap one, and now a late race caution where anything's gonna happen. Who knows, John Dillon may dive bomb turn one, and remember, he won a race here, well, he won two races back here in season four. The second win that he got here was because of a dive bomb move in front of him, and he passed all five cars to win that event. So Hayden Klein is out front. We are definitely gonna get a restart, probably a green-white checker, but let's get let's get a replay of what happened to bring out that caution. Well, I was talking about all those body slams in turn one. Well, it turns out Balkan and Piet were the two drivers that hooked together, and that looks identical to that season four race twenty four incident. That was that was basically identical to that. That's actually pretty uh, scary how how close that crash was and. Man, oh, the 11 of Eddie Jones just gets in it. Matthew McMurray, whoa, look at Jacob Grant and Kozlowski sideways. Kozlowski, I know, got in it. I believe Grant probably, no, Grant actually got clear. That's impressive. It's Carter Rex, Kurt Kozlowski, barely able to uh, keep that car from uh, wrecking. And so what happened here to Dylan Young? All right, well, here's what happened to the 32. Uh, the big wreck in front, there's Garrett Jones uh, on the apron. They're running up through here. 
There's Carnage, and he just runs into the back of the 56 of Connor Breton. Sean Henley is able to drive on through it. Eddie Jones not able to do the same as he runs into Dylan Young. Then Matthew McMurray gets into him. Not the 78 Matthew McMurray. Remember, that's Jeffrey Fingy. That's just a typo on my part. But they are finally done wrecking. And we can finally get you back to the restart where it's going to be Hayden Klein trying to win his first career race. But John Dillon is in hot pursuit trying to win his seventh career Bass Pro Shops Cup Series race. And John Dillon may have a problem. He's on the apron. He may be pitting. He might be pitting for fuel. Let's see what happens here. They're coming around. Pit lane is open. It looks like we may have some takers, and John Dillon is one of them. The 99 stays out. Jordan Apolito and Seth Cole stay on the racetrack. They're on the lead lap. They could be a big player in this. And Apolito is. I believe Seth Cole is on the lead lap as well. No, Seth is a lap. Wait. No, he, yeah, he's a lap down. Okay. A lot of these guys are lap down. They're just trying to get their lap back. I stay kind of waver. So, a lot of drivers on pit lane. This could backfire on some of those guys that stayed out. And <laughs> you got to think Hayden Klein's going to be a complete sitting duck out there. There's no way. Old tires. He could be low on fuel. you got to remember that. This, this could get really dicey. <laughs> as these drivers merge up onto the racetrack and I believe the lights on the race car are going to go out this time and if they do we are going to get back to the restart oh they're already out oh my goodness okay uh, Hayden Klein, Jordan Napolito are the front two third is going to be Jordan Vulcan fourth Henley and fifth is Eddie Jones sixth is Chris Summer seventh Drew Austin eighth Deion Scott ninth Kirk Kozlowski tenth is Julie Stewart that is completely unofficial I have no clue uh, where everybody is for this restart, but we're actually getting green a lot sooner than I thought we were. Like I said, I thought we were going to pretty much check it, but it's only three laps to go. Here we go, green flag, back to Any body slams in the first turn could really cause a big problem. We've seen those in the past, and I don't think it can do that here on this restart. Everybody's trying to be extra cautious. But Hayden Klein with the track position is out front. Oh no, he's pulling down to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to be taking a pit stop. Hayden Klein, the dominant car of the day, is into the pits. As they come around, it'll be two laps of racing to go. Jordan Apolito is your leader. Now he's out of gas. Apolito runs it dry. Now who is the leader? Is it? No, Kyle Smith is a lap down. Who's on the lead? Who, who's the leader? It's... It's jo Joshua Balkin, the Daytona 500 winner. And his closest competitor, Sean Henley, is out of gas. Henley is out of fuel. Joshua Balkin is your leader, the Daytona 500 winner. Trying to go back to back. But he's, yeah, he scored in the lead. Joshua Balkin on the white flag lap, trying to win the first two races of the season. But Eddie Jones is trying to take that from him. All he's got to do is cycle around without running out of gas, and it looks like he's going to do just that. Joshua Balkan is going to make Bass Pro Shops Cup Series history, winning the first two races of the season. Joshua Balkan wins the Subway Fresh Fit 500 at Phoenix. And what a dominant team BK Racing has been. Julie Stewart won the Budweiser Shootout. Joshua Balkan won the Daytona 500, and now he wins at Phoenix. Congratulations, Joshua Balkan. Very, very impressive. So the first two races are swept by Joshua Balkan. Second is Eddie Jones. Okay, now it's official. Sorry, uh, it was unofficial there. But it's Joshua Balkan, Eddie Jones, Chris Summers, Kurt Kozlowski, and Ethan Roberts. They came out of nowhere. Jeffrey Fingy, the second place driver of the Daytona 500, he finishes in the sixth spot. 7th was Jacob Grant, 8th Courtney Simpson, ninth William Duncan, and 10th was Jacob Stumpf. I have no clue where Chris Summers, Kurt Kozlowski, Ethan Roberts, Jeffrey Fingy, Jacob Grant. Remember Courtney Simpson, we were talking about her. She has a good car, and she was running within about, I think she was running 11th or 12th, but 3rd all the way to 7th? I have no clue where all those guys came from. Most specifically, Ethan Roberts and Jeffrey Fingy. I have no clue how they worked their way into the top uh, top five or six. 
my goodness, anything can happen at Phoenix. Remember, all those leaders running out of gas, and somehow, Joshua Balkan sweeps the first two races after uh, what seemed like it was one of the longest Bass Pro Shops Cup Series races, but it's actually right around the normal pace. Remember, we usually have right around 50 miles in these events, so we decided to have about 48 miles here at Phoenix. Usually, it's only 32. That seemed kind of like a short race, but Jordan, Balkan, David Rochester, Connor Breton, Carter Kozlowski, Dylan Young, all those guys deep in the field had uh, big problems. And John Dillon, the driver that was catching uh, Hayden Klein in a hurry for some of those laps until that caution came out. He had a piston issue. He's going to finish 33rd. <laughs> and that, that's got to be a heartbreaker for him. And Hayden Klein, 16th position, dominated this race, is going to get two bonus points. you got to give him that, but it's got to be tough. So Joshua Balkan wins the first two races of the season. Remember, entering the season, BK Racing only had, uh, what was it, one win? I think Julie Stewart may have gotten one win last season. I don't even know if she got a win, but <laughs> BK Racing, they either had uh, zero or one wins entering the season, and now they sweep the first three. The Budweiser shootout, Julie Stewart, now the Daytona 500 and the Subway Fresh Fit 500 are swept by Joshua Balkan. That's impressive. Can Joshua be three for three? That's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be a long shot, but maybe he can get it done at Auto Club next week. So congratulations to the '93 team winning the first two races of the season, and here's the celebration screen for Joshua Belkin.